Hi friends. Today we will turn some documents like these into a knowledge graph like this one. So the knowledge graph they consists of nodes also called as entities and the relationships between them. Okay? So for example, here we have two nodes Jack and the other node is Lloyd and we have a relationship uh, which is shown here okay so the knowledge graph is simply nodes or entities and the relationship between them okay so today we will see how to convert any text into a knowledge graph like this okay so here we have a document uh, this is uh, the commentary uh, during uh, AFL match Australian Football League okay now so let's say we have a folder with a bunch of documents now these documents can be text documents pdfs or html files they can even be audio or video files okay so we start with the folder as an input and we can and at the end we will create a knowledge graph like this okay now today's code is based on the blog post by Rahul Naik. Uh, he has written an excellent blog post and also shared the GitHub code. Uh, so the code is also based on uh, his GitHub repo. So thanks Rahul uh, for such a wonderful uh, blog post. Okay. Now there are two ways to create a knowledge graph. So the first one is let's say we know about our data uh, very well. Okay. Since it is a sports commentary data, we know it's going to be about players, it's going to be about teams, the coaches and the relationship will be like a player is part of a team, coach is a coach of team and all this is connected to a game. Maybe during the discussion, the commentators make some predictions, uh, there is some sort of theme to a game. And then there is some likely headline uh, or prob uh, prob pro probable uh, some headline uh, uh, about the game, right? And uh, these are all centered around the this particular game. Now, it don't have to be about one game. We can build knowledge graphs based on uh, the commentary of multiple games, right? So in such a case, we will have another episode. We will have uh, 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 its connected uh, notes. Uh, for example, one of the team, uh, it could be playing both the matches. So in such a case, uh, this team note uh, gets connected to other episode also, right? So that's how the knowledge graph looks like. Now we can do this when we know our data well, right? Meaning if we know what sort of nodes we want to have and what sort of relationships, explicit relationships we want to have, then we can define a data model like this and we can build a knowledge graph according to this particular data model. Uh, this method uh, I have covered in one of my previous videos, right? So here the relationships also fixed, right? So we are not going to have any relationship which is not uh, defined here. That's method number one. But today we are going to approach the problem uh, in a more open-ended manner, right? Let's imagine we know very little about our data, right? So we don't know what sort of nodes to expect or what sort of relationships to expect, right? So in such a scenario, we will build this sort of this open, uh, we will approach the problem in this more of open-ended way. We build a knowledge graph and we analyze the graph to understand what sort of nodes and relationships we have. And then we go back to the data model. We create a new data model and we will create a new knowledge graph, right? Which will be more useful to us. But as I mentioned, we will uh, take the second approach, which is of more open-ended today. All right. So here, uh, we don't really need LangChain, but the reason I'm uh, using LangChain is uh, it has an excellent uh, utility called this directory loader, right? So as I mentioned, this directory, it can have any documents, multiple text files, PDFs are a combination of PDFs, HTML files, so on and so forth, right? So using this data directory, we read all the documents uh, in the directory, okay? And then we are using the splitter to split 
द डाक्युमेंट्स इन टू स्मर चंक्स ना इन दिस पर्टिक्युर केस वी हेव ओनली वन डाक्युमेंट विच लुक्स लाइक इट्स अबउट फाइव थौसंड वर्ड्स बट इमेजिन वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट ए नॉलेज ग्राफ आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड्स ऑफ गेम्स राइट सो वी हेव ए लार्ज कॉर्पस ऑफ टेक्स्ट राइट सो टू हैंडल इट प्रॉपरली वी आर डिवाइडिंग द डाक्युमेंट इन टू मच स्मर चंक्स with chunk size 1500 tokens with an overlap of uh, 150 okay so after splitting we have 16 chunks and here we have uh, i think the third uh, chunk okay so this is our third chunk it's it's about the size of a paragraph and then for convenience we have created a data frame out of it so for example here uh, this is the first chunk uh, this is the check uh, third, third chunk we just printed right uh, which we printed here and the source uh, so from which document this chunk is coming from again when we have multiple documents uh, this uh, keeping track of which document uh, the context is coming from is super useful and we have also created a chunk id uh, using this python eu id library uh, so i'm not going into much details of this uh, function because it is pretty straight forward all we are doing is providing this chunks and we are also calling this uu id function uh, for each uh, each chunk to create a unique id this id is also going to be very useful uh, a bit later today all right and then we want to extract uh, the concepts right so what we do is uh, for that we need an llm so the way it's going to work is we provide one chunk at a time to an llm and we ask the llm hey this is my data now you come up with these entities or nodes for a knowledge graph i am going to build and you also tell me what is the relationship between those nodes you have suggested okay so that's how we are going to build the nodes and the relationships so here we have a function uh, this uh, df to to graph uh, which i will explain uh, that function again i am not going to uh, all the code uh, uh, because that would make the video too long i will cover only the important aspects but uh, if you are stuck if anything is not clear to you please let me know in the comments i will explain so the most important one as i mentioned is this so here we are making use of an llm and this input is our context so we can we pass the context one at a time okay and then here is our system prompt so what we are doing is we are saying to the llm hey you are a network graph maker who extract the terms and the relationship from a given context okay so i will not read uh, all the details but the uh, just i will briefly touch the important ones okay so while traversing to each sentence think about the key terms mentioned okay so this is where we are telling the llm hey extract any objects entities location organization person maybe acronym document service concepts etc okay so extract these as entities okay and then we are saying these entities should have a relationship between them right so these extract this one or multiple relationships between those entities okay and then um uh, the terms can be related yeah so each node it don't necessarily connected to only one another node it can be connected to multiple nodes okay and your output should look like this it should be in a json format with node 1 and node 2 and then an edge right so node 1 is a concept from extracted ontology i know to this is a related concept right because there's supposed to be a relationship between node 1 and node 2 so that's why we are saying a related concept from the extracted ontology and the edge is a relationship which can be one or more between node 1 and node 2 okay that's our prompt so here we are calling the llm uh, we are providing the model name uh, the system prompt uh, which is this the user prompt is the context we are 
inputting to the LLM. Okay, so LLM does its job, and then it will return these JSON dictionaries uh, in this format with three elements. Okay, so that's what we are going to do here. So in this function, we are calling the LLM with one piece of text or one chunk at a time. So for each chunk, we are going to get a JSON with three elements. For example, as you can see here, node one is Melbourne, node two, some premiership winner, and here we have uh, some relationship. So in this context, Melbourne is predicted to win the premier uh, premiership in 2023. Okay, and similarly we have another node one, node two, and the relationship between them, right? Like that, right? So all right, so that's how it goes, and then yeah, so. Again, we simply converted what has been extracted into another data frame, again for convenience. So here we have the node one, the node two. The edge is the relationship between these two nodes. And we have the chunk ID, which we saw before. And the count is just one, because uh, maybe in a different chunk, we might find the same nodes and same relationship between them, right? So we want to keep track of how strong the relationship is. So it's not just the node sign relationship. We wanted to know how strong the relationship is, meaning how often this relationship occurred, right? So for that purpose, we are also tracking the count. So at the end of this exercise, we are going to group by node one, node two, and the edge so that we can see uh, how many times that particular edge has shown up between a given pair of nodes, okay? All right, so this is the example we saw, right? This premier, uh, the Melbourne premier uh, winner uh, in this context, Melbourne is predicted to win the premiership, so and so forth, right? So that's one type of uh, relationships we have extracted. Now, we are going to extract another type of relationships, uh, which uh, we are calling this contextual proximity. I'll explain what it is. So let's say, uh, let me go back. So here we have uh, a piece of document, right? Uh, we just extracted the node uh, uh, or the entities uh, from this piece of text and the relationship between them. Now let's say we have uh, a node called AFL and another node called uh, uh, maybe this Alistair uh, Clarkson. Now even though there is not a direct relationship between these two, because this sentence and this sentence are far from each other. But because they are appearing within the same chunk, it is more likely there is some sort of relationship between them, right? They are more likely to have some contextual similarity, right? Because if these two are talked in the same paragraph, then probably some sort of uh, indirect or some sort of contextual relationship between them. So what we are going to do is, after we have done the first one, where we have extracted the direct relationship between every two nodes, for each chunk, for all the extracted nodes, we are going to create a new relationship called contextual similarity. Right. So, for example, from this paragraph, if we have 10 nodes in method one, for each node, we are going to create nine contextual relationships. Right. So, for each node, we are going to connect it to the remaining nine nodes extracted uh, from this paragraph. Okay. Uh, this is important. It might be a little confusing. Okay, so let me go back. So we have already done this. 
and let's assume this is all for the same context right so we have extracted these nodes and the in, uh, in relationships and now in order to calculate this contextual proximity what we need to do is first we wanted to know all the nodes for a given chunk id okay so we are going to melt this data frame so that we have only let's say one column which is node which contain all the nodes from this column as well as this column along with the chunk id so then we will know for a given chunk id how many nodes are there right that's what we have done here okay so we have combined node 1 and node 2 we have created a new column called node and we keep tracking uh, this chunk id as the second column right so here we have created two columns a new data frame with node which combine these two columns and then uh, the chunk id now we are going to self join this data frame to itself using the chunk id it's sort of this inner join right so this way we will be able to find out or establish these contextual relationships between the nodes belonging to the same chunk id okay uh, so this code it's a bit involved uh, again if something is not clear do let me know but what we are doing is we are simply doing the self join of this two column data frame where one column is all the nodes the second column is chunk id so using chunk id to create this self join so that we can map each node from a given chunk to all the nodes from the same chunk okay so that way we are creating uh, this a contextual relationship so the result is a very similar data frame where we have this node 1 and node 2 and so for this given node all these three nodes for example ken port adelaide uh, these ones those are coming from the same chunk id okay but they may not necessarily have the direct relationships but because they are coming from the same chunk id we have established this contextual proximity as the relationship between them okay so we have two data frames now the direct relationship which we have here and then the contextual relationship between the same nodes uh, sorry between the nodes from the same uh, chunk id right and then we are going to match these two data frames we simply aggregated these two data frames um, yeah and so now a relationship between these two nodes can be coming from multiple chunks right so here when we aggregated uh, we have joined all the chunk ids so for example here you will see this one chunk and this is another chunk so what it means is this chunk has this contextual proximity relationship between these two nodes and this chunk also has the same contextual proximity relationship between these two nodes okay so here we are aggregating all the chunk ids and all the edges as well right so given these two nodes they can have multiple contextual proximity relationships they can have multiple different kind of join uh, direct relationships as well right so here we have counted and it happened that it has two contextual uh, proximity uh, relationships whereas here you can see this one these two nodes has only one relationship which is this direct relationship uh, 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 which is this values of price uh, for the competition right all right so we have created all the information uh, which we need to create uh, a knowledge graph right so then we are using this uh, open source uh, again python library called network x uh, it's very simple easy to use library all we need is first define the nodes so here we have some nodes in node 1 some nodes in node 2 so first we will find out all the nodes okay so we are taking this node 1 and node 2 to find out all the nodes so for our data set uh, the llm came up with 138 nodes okay so first we create these 138 nodes which is so we have created all these circles which are uh, 138 here and then 
we want to establish the relationships between them so we are going over the data frame we are iterating over each row and for every pair of nodes we are adding this relationship to the graph now this relationship uh, uh, based on the weight as well so the weight will determine how thick uh, these relationships are okay for example this relationship uh, is very strong meaning it appeared in multiple uh, chunks or maybe multiple contexts uh, etc okay all right so so here we are adding the relationships which is this edge between a pair of nodes and we are providing the weight uh, so that we know how strong the relationship is all right so we have created a knowledge graph but where is this color code coming from right i mean here we have distinct color code uh, for uh, different nodes after building the knowledge graph we want to find out uh, or look for some themes or some similarities uh, between uh, the nodes right so here what we are doing is uh, from the same network uh, library network x library it has a bunch of these algorithms uh, to analyze the data so one of which is building these communities okay so from these 160 138 nodes we have now we can build co communities which is basically grouping different nodes uh, into different communities based on how they are connected to other nodes what sort of relationships they have etc right so the algorithm name is uh, this given human uh, uh, we don't need to go much into the details all we do is we simply provide our network graph okay and then we call this uh, the community function so this will generate uh, the communities now within these communities we can have first level second level third level communities as we go down uh, the granularity uh, increases right so for example when we run this next the community generator we get first level of communities and then when we run it uh, one more time uh, we get the next level of communities we can keep uh, repeating this okay so here we have uh, total nine communities for example if you look at the first community uh, okay so yeah as you see it's a list of list so this is the first list right so all these nodes are determined to be in the same community by this algorithm based on what sort of relationships each of these nodes have and which other nodes uh, they are connected to so and so forth okay now think of it like this right if we have enough data i mean here for the demo purpose we are only working with this small data set but if we have enough data now one of the communities could be uh, maybe all the players belonging to one team right maybe another uh, community could be uh, all the uh, goalkeepers right because all the goalkeepers share, share some common attributes when commentator makes uh, some comments how they save the gold etc etc uh, goal etc etc right so in such a scenario uh, we might have a community uh, remember we are not explicitly defining this community based on each node characteristics the algorithm is creating these communities so the all the goal keepers from goalkeepers from different communities they form uh, they might form a community right so like that so here is the second community uh, here is the second community here is the third community so and so forth right so we have nine communities for the 138 nodes okay we have form uh, measured the communities and then we want to give that coloring right uh, so those nine communities we have these uh, nine colors here right so we want to give the color uh, to our nodes so that we can clearly see uh, the communities so here all we are doing is we are going over this uh, data frame uh, or this notes list and based on which node uh, or which community the node belongs to we will be uh, appending a color a unique color to each node okay so that's all we have done here and then to the network we have added that coloring information and finally we are making use of this pyviz library to create our network okay so the network we created using network x it's all within the memory right so we can make use of 
uh, this network which is our G uh, to analyze uh, to find some patterns uh, maybe to find detect some analysis so and so forth but for visual we are using this PyViz library and uh, just setting some default parameters uh, like how the look and feel of it and we are simply inputting our network uh, here and we are saving this as this uh, uh, HTML file. Okay, so the final output uh, is this. Now, we'll not go into what these nodes are, what their relationships, etc. are, but as you can understand, uh, this might be uh, 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 different players. For example, okay, Adam Kingsley and this Kingsley, uh, probably another Kingsley. Uh, uh, so they belonging to the same community. And here they don't have a direct relationship, but as we saw here, uh, two nodes. So this Jack and Lloyd, they belonging to the same community. They probably belonging to the same uh, uh, same team. And uh, so here the relationship is Lloyd discusses Jack readiness to perform well for an entire season. Okay, so it seems like Lloyd is actually uh, a commentator, and Jack is uh, a player right so from this we sort of get what sort of uh, nodes what sort of relationships uh, 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 there are right with that understanding we can go back and we can explicitly define a data model like this with the nodes of interest to us and the relationships of interest to us and we redo uh, the same process so that this time we get more much more refined knowledge graphs uh, which we can further analyze uh, and to understand uh, extract insights etc okay uh, i will very quickly summarize all we are doing is we are taking a folder as an input with a bunch of documents and then we use langchain directory loader to read all those documents and to easily manage we split the data into much smaller chunks. We created a small data frame for convenience. And then we make use of an LLM to go over all the chunks one by one. And for each chunk, we have asked the LLM to extract the nodes and the relationships. Here we have defined uh, how the entities what, what what entities we are interested in the sort of relationships etc and we define this output format okay so the llm it went over each chunk it came up with these nodes and the relationships again for convenience we have defined uh, a new data frame which has two nodes and a relationship and also how many times the relationship appeared right so that's one level of relationships we built and then we wanted to build this context proximity relationship between nodes belonging to the same chunk okay we did a bit of uh, data wrangling to create contextual proximity relationship between nodes belonging to the same chunk id okay and then we combined these two relationships we created a final data frame uh, which looks like this okay we have extracted all the information needed to build a knowledge graph and then we have defined uh, we have created all the nodes using network x library we have added the relationship along with the weight of the relationship and then we have used this community algorithm to detect the communities uh, uh, for our nodes so we have detected nine communities and for each communities we have created a new color code okay and that color we have added back to our network information and finally we use this pyviz library to create our uh, network uh, with nodes and the relationships between them Okay, that's all for this video. 
and very soon i will be creating more videos where we have this explicit data model uh, and we will work with more data we will see how we can make use of these llms uh, to create uh, uh, more uh, network graphs uh, one thing i forgot to mention is uh, we are using open source uh, llms uh, uh, with uh, olama framework so here i am running olama locally uh, with some uh, mistral model so import olama client and then we can call the llm uh, locally okay now you can use open ai if you have credentials but you can do all this uh, by running llms open source llms locally also okay that's all for this video thank you very much